shirt with a black clip-on tie, but at the very last minute, I decided to go with this baby blue pullover. Well, it was a little less formal, broke with tradition, and the v-neck collar de-emphasized the roundness of my face. So, um, I was lining up to have my picture taken. We'd all been given that black plastic comb, and I couldn't stop breaking it through my hair. I was very nervous. Well, it was my first photo shoot. I just wanted to get it right. So, it was finally my turn to have the, my picture taken. The photographer sat me down on the stool, and at the very last minute, I decided to pose. <laughs> I looked straight into the camera, aimed my shoulder at the lens, tilted my head to the side, and flash! <laughs> I looked like Cindy Brady trapped in the body of a little Asian boy. <laughs> and I knew I was different. I mean, I had an entire battalion of G.I. Joes that never went to war. <laughs> they were always on furlough. One Christmas, my father got me the G.I. Joe Wilderness Outpost. He had a lookout tower, garage for the Jeep, and slept six. I turned it into San Francisco's most successful bed and breakfast. <laughs> so, uh, some of you Betty from Ugly Betty are, are desperate housewives. Um, a reporter once asked me, how do you feel about playing a stereotypical effeminate flamboyant homosexual? And that's always kind of a tricky question for me. Because I feel like the question they should be asking me is, how does it feel to be a stereotypical <laughs> effeminate flamboyant homosexual? Because that's a question I'm prepared to answer. Because the truth is, folks, ever since I was a little boy, I've been a great big girl. <laughs> and it's precisely because of that that I've been verbally abused, discriminated against, and sometimes physically threatened, and now, through some strange twist of fate, I'm now being paid for it! <laughs> I feel fabulous! Thank you, you guys are great! Yeah, so your family is, uh, are they very conservative? Very strict Filipino Catholic family. Uh, wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, with Filipino Catholics, you know, they don't just believe in God. They believe in everything. Uh -huh. Vampires, uh -huh. leprechauns, uh -huh. Bigfoot. Uh -huh. You know, the only thing they don't believe in is paying retail. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. No, no, to Filipinos, The Exorcist, the Exorcist is mm. a documentary. Uh -huh. yeah. I saw that movie and I couldn't sleep for weeks. I was like, up all night. Now, any sensible parent would say, it's only a movie with special effects. Nobody gets possessed by the devil. My parents were like, that happened to your auntie and die. <laughs> she used to levitate and speak in tongues. And, and tell me really quickly, because you know how much I love animals, and you have a dog. I have a dog. That, tell me the story of your dog. I have a dog who used to be on the George Lopez show. Who, it was an actor? He was an actor, and he got fired for being fat. <laughs> no, this is her actually 
which is sorry. I was I was doing a sitcom at, at uh, the Rampart lot called uh, Half and Half, and the trainer says, um, I got this dog, and he hasn't worked in six months, and he's really depressed. All the other dogs go to work on their sitcoms during the day. And do you want to see him? Yes, I want to see him. So um, he couldn't double for his brother anymore. He'd outgrown him and got fat. So there. <gasps> that's a cute dog. What's his name? Ozzy. Oh, that's a great he dog. Look fat. No, no. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll call him and call Bob. That's Maybe probably a good to... angle, though. It Maybe, yeah. No, that that's is. cute. I, I, look, I think you're hilarious, and I think you're smart and funny, and thank you so much thank for being you, here. Thank you, Ellen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We don't wear it all the time, just sometimes, just for a party or something.